education offers a real chance of, of inspiration or transformation. Uh, I tend to think that American universities are still often too insular and that we don't do enough in a globalized world to connect our students with those abroad and to bring in foreign students into this country. Something we're certainly getting better at. I think there's still room to grow. There are indeed occasions where there's personal responsibility that compounds poverty. Uh, but it's so much more complicated than that. And I think it reflects something that we've developed in this country that I tend to think of as an empathy gap. And in a sense, your challenge uh, in fundraising is to address that empathy gap. Because if you are affluent in America today, then in a way that was not true a generation ago, you're more likely to be insulated from people in need. You're more likely to live in an exclusive neighborhood that is not economically uh, heterogeneous. You're uh, not so likely to have friends or colleagues who are in need. And so disadvantage becomes something you're intellectually aware of, but not something that confronts you daily. In contrast, if you're poor in America today, then every day you encounter people who are needier than you, and confronted by that, you respond. And indeed, in the US, affluent Americans who live in economically mixed neighborhoods are more generous in their charitable donations than people uh, than affluent Americans who live in, in exclusively affluent areas. And I think one of the dangers of this insulation is that we do build up these narratives in which disadvantage is all about personal responsibility or all about bad choices. We have to think about education interventions as something that runs the whole gamut from early childhood all the way up through university uh, because when kids have been uh, harmed or disadvantaged early on, then it's not enough to try to figure out new ways to get them in college at age 18. We have to think systematically about how to put kids on a trajectory that is going to lead them there uh, 18 years later. When we set out to write A Path of Peers, we were really focused on the research about the impact that one could have empowering others. And we gradually became more and more struck by the evidence that trying to empower others ends up having an incredibly powerful effect on oneself. For about half of Americans, they seem to derive as much or more pleasure from giving as they do from getting. Um, and there are likewise these um, fascinating studies about when people engage in pro-social behavior about the, the effects on them. One of the early studies looked at a cohort of um, Boston uh, students and found that over their lives, those who were more public spirited, more engaged in, in volunteering and donations, that this level of pro-social behavior was more correlated to longevity than low cholesterol was. For the cost of employing one US soldier abroad for a year, you can open about 20 schools and operate them for three years. I think that Extremists around the world understand intuitively the power uh, of education. That's why, that's why the Afghan Taliban throws acid in girls' faces. That's why the Pakistan Taliban shot Malala. That's why Boko Haram kidnapped schoolgirls in Nigeria. They understand that education is a threat to extremism. I don't think that we understand adequately the degree to which education creates uh, uh, allies around the world and we don't invest in it. Being in a very different world and environment where you're stretching your every muscle and it's kind of hurting a little bit, I think that's what universities do at their best. And sometimes they do that in class, and sometimes they do that in extracurricular activities, and sometimes they do that by sending kids out to tutor in, in troubled high schools or in prisons, and sometimes they do that by sending kids off to, to Cairo or to Zambia or to Bangladesh. And I think that we can do a better job of getting kids in over their heads sometimes. Thanks very much for having me here.